Could you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? Uh, my name is James Swanton. I'm the adapter and actor of Sykes and Nancy. It's a one-man play, uh, a one-man play by Charles Dickens, and uh, it's, it's, it's a one-man play that Dickens himself performed in his uh, lifetime as one of his public readings. Um, so we're on our third day of rehearsals in our lovely rehearsal rooms in Percy Street. Uh, it's quite a messy kitchen of a, of a rehearsal space, but uh, it's a very messy play. It's full of uh, bloodshed and uh, guilt-stricken rampages and uh, various cries of anguish. So, uh, yeah, good fun all in all. I think we're getting somewhere now and uh, we're just gearing up for our tour of the country before we uh, come to Trafalgar Studios in December. It's all very exciting. And what's your favourite part of what you do? Oh, it's difficult to say. Um, I suppose the thing as an actor that I've always been most drawn to and sort of excited by is um, the grotesque. You know, I consider myself a character actor and uh, the grotesque thing. Well, the grotesque means various different things to various different people. Um, it can be anything from sort of light comedy, where it's just sort of about distortion, to uh, getting into quite deep and murky waters with sort of deformity and disfigurement. So it's, uh, it's, it's tremendously kind of invigorating and uh, interesting to kind of probe for grotesque in a show like this. Um, because you have characters like Fagan and Bill Sykes, all of whom have to have a very distinct physical and um, vocal character, so it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite fascinating to probe all of that. Um, there are numerous different scenes where uh, I'm two or actually most of the time three people having a conversation with myself, sort of leaping across the stage. I mean, uh, in, in a split second you have to uh, do your best to convince the audience who are my characters, so uh, yeah, going into the grotesque is very helpful in that way. Um, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why the grotesque is so uh, incredibly fascinating. Um, I have a few theories on it, I think. Because, because there's something about it which is um, sort of taking evolution a few steps back. I think, I think there's almost a, something in our sort of unconscious memory as human beings where we kind of think back to where we were sort of half-formed creatures sliding mm. through mud and muck and uh, sort of becoming human. There's, there's an element of that sort of thing when you're a character like Fagan, you sort of take a, this uh, atavistic slide into being almost a half-rat, half-human creature. Mm. But, then, but then in performance, when you're uh, trying to seize upon the grotesque, it, um, it, it sort of goes from being a kind of Darwinian thing to being sort of um, almost like Victorian spiritualism, I suppose. You know, you feel you're at a Ouija board or a seance or something trying to summon these characters, trying to get them to take possession of you. Um, Dickens said a wonderful thing about uh, how he inhabited character in his public readings, which was, uh, I think, assumption has charms for me, which puts it wonderfully simply. Mm. Just, just a thrill of uh, becoming a different sort of physical and uh, vocal character is, uh, yeah, certainly the best fun I have with Sykes and Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. And when was the first moment you fell in love with theatre? I suppose the first moment I became aware of actors working in the theatre you could go and see was um, being taken to uh, the York Theatre on our pantomime. Um, I grew up in York and we're, we're very, very lucky then to have uh, one of the best pantos in uh, in the country. Um, I was especially sort of uh, enamoured of all the uh, flamboyant villains played by this wonderful, wonderful actor called David Leonard. He, uh, he recently finished uh, playing Miss Trunchbull in Matilda the Musical. Mm. I, think, I think if I was to find one figure who's had a huge influence on uh, my uh, sort of fascination with drama, and indeed the grotesque actually, would be uh, how David Leonard goes about creating his characters. Um, I think the first time I was sort of emotionally kind of affected by, by performance was watching uh, the old silent film of The Phantom of the Opera. Um, again, a very grotesque thing, the grotesque kind of made for a movement. And, uh, and 
as are most adaptations of the Phantom kind of celebration of theatre. It's very hard to put together a version of that without it, uh, without it being so. So yes, watching, uh, watching Long Chain as yes, the Phantom in that film was uh, another sort of exciting step forward. And, uh, then the first time I really stood on a stage and felt, oh gosh, maybe I could do this for a living and maybe I have something to offer was uh, when I had the great good fortune at school to play uh, Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. Um, I think that was about nine years ago. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's odd that I'm still uh, playing Dickens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, uh, he's served me very well. I hope I'm uh, serving him <laughs> all right in return. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give your younger self? Oh dear. Um, oh, this, this kind of thing's really awkward. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, I'm only 23, so I think I'm too young to be giving advice to my younger <laughs> self. Um, I suppose the principal thing would be to kind of try to embrace your individuality as much as possible. Mm. Um, which is still a work in progress, really, as I think it's for all people throughout their lives. Um, I'm, not, I'm not particularly fond of my uh, face or voice, but um, well, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know a great many actors who are fond of their faces or voices, but um, it's finding how you can bring something to the table, really, and uh, finding methods and techniques for work for you in creating characters. And, uh, I suppose also as an extension of the other bit of advice would be to sort of attach yourself to and engage with people and with projects that uh, you're passionate about, you know, where you can bring some kind of positive energy mm. and sort of uh, love to the room because, uh, you know, it's as King Lear said really, nothing will come of nothing. If you, if you become embroiled in something where you don't feel you know, you have anything to say about uh, that, that particular thing, or when you don't get on with the people, or the project isn't quite right. It, it, it can be absolute uh, misery. And given that actors work so little, I think that misery is kind of compounded if, uh, you know, you've been out of work for four months and you finally get something and you think, oh gosh, I have absolutely nothing to say about this. Um, yeah, and I, I, suppose, I suppose the other thing would be to to sort of find heroes and have heroes and uh, see what you can learn from their example. Um, I've been obsessed for the last year with the, uh, the Victorian actor Henry Irving, who uh, did things in a theatre which I think no human being has done before or since, certainly with uh, his uh, spectacular stage effects and, uh, and also his characterisations. You know, they've, they've been uh, instrumental in. Uh, my reconsidering how to go about Sykes and Nancy. Just Irving stocking trade with sort of various guilt stricken murderers with uh, dark secrets tucked away in the attic. So I think thinking about he played uh, a character like Eugene Aaron or uh, Matthias in The Bells has been, uh, yeah, it's been uh, food for thought really in uh, re returning to Sykes and Nancy. Mm. So yes, I think, I think, I think. I think those were three bits of advice. Those would be my three bits of advice to my younger self, but, but also definitely ongoing things. Yeah. And finally, if your life were a musical, what would the grand finale number be? Oh dear, this is another hard one. Um, <laughs> I, hmm, I suppose I'm so steeped in kind of blood and thunder melodrama at the moment that uh, I would have to go for something like When the Night Wind Howls from Ruddy Call by a Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a tremendous fan of Gilbert and Sullivan in general, but it's a, it's a fantastic kind of dance macabre where uh, all of the ghosts descend from ancestral portraits and then uh, run rampant in a graveyard. So, uh, yes, I would uh, most happily turn up to that with uh, my opera cape on and my uh, top hat. And, Maybe a skull under one arm, and uh, yes. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks.